So hello, I'm here today with Zuzana Vesela, Assistant Dean of the School of International Relations and Diplomacy. And I wanted to talk to you about um, some of the exciting new programs we have coming up in the School of International Relations. And so yeah, could you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Um, hi, Lily, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited actually to talk about this because we have a new program um, that we're just launching, Political Science. Um, and I think it's a great companion to the one that it's already running, which is international relations and diplomacy. Um, the programs, it's quite interesting because in a way, I think the programs really complement each other um, because while international relations is focused a little bit more on, well, foreign policy, you know, the way different governments interact between each other, political science is focused much more on what happens inside a government. So, you know, what how is domestic policy formed? How does the government work within? And that also re reflects all the different outcomes in terms of career paths that our students can follow. And I, I'm really excited to um, be able to launch now not only future diplomats, but also people who are going to you know, create dom domestic policy and, and, and run campaigns and, and advice um, for things that happen within the government. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. And what I also liked about it was the specialization aspect of it. So there's going to be concentrations um, in the political science program. Could you tell us a little bit about the concentrations? So I know that I get quite a lot of questions about how do the concentrations work? Um, and essentially, it's quite simple. One thing I always highlight is the fact that you do the same amount of courses, the same number of courses, regardless of what you pick. So you always do 30 courses over the course of six semesters if you're studying full time. Um, and the way that works is that everyone has some, you know, common basics of political science, because, of course, that's the thing that everyone needs in order to be able to maybe, you know, do more advanced classes. Uh, but for the more advanced classes, we want to make sure that you're studying something that you're passionate about. Um, so, you know, if your passion, for example, is really looking at what's happening right now in the world and looking at maybe some of the issues we've seen with democratic backsliding and populism and maybe the rise of authoritarian regimes, um, then, you know, pick a concentration such as conflict and democracy studies, which is perfect because you're really going to be looking at, you know, radicalization trends in party politics or political violence or democratization, but also survival of autocrats. So things that are very topical today, but also perhaps, you know, your calling or your passion may be something completely different and could be, say, human rights. And then you want to make sure that those advanced classes you're taking are much more focused specifically on human rights. You know, things such as maybe um, the legal aspects of human rights or, um, you know, international development. So we want to make sure that you become a little bit of an expert in an area that you're particularly interested in. Um, the concentration courses are always five courses. So on top of your major courses, you're taking eight concentration courses in your year two and three. Um, and then of course, everyone has also just five elective courses completely of your own choice, be it from you know the School of International Relations, be it from political science, or be it say from journalism, or maybe you're really interested in history or languages. So those five courses are then completely up to you. OK, nice. And I also wanted to ask, I mean, since you're doing um, the interviews for students who are applying for this program um, and helping with the application process, what kind of student or what type of student really succeeds in a program like this? Um, I think actually the, the answer is quite simple and it's not restricted just to political science or international relations. Um, enthusiastic students. It might sound silly, but um, I also teach and I've definitely seen this in my classes. Um, what happens is that if you're really passionate about something, um, then you know, you're going to like listen to an interesting podcast. You're going to like watch a video or read a particularly interesting article. You're going to understand it a little bit more. So you're going to get really good grades on your first exam and then you're going to think, wow, this is awesome and 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 you will just you know become better and better and it will encourage you to speak more to discuss more and you will just soak up knowledge and it will feel quite effortless and fun um of course there's a flip side to that which is that you know sometimes that happens to students with maths 
that they are not that keen to do a little bit of exercise and they get a bad grade and they think, oh God, I don't have talent for this. Um, and so you can kind of spiral down in the same way. So I always try to encourage students, you know, take subjects you are interested in because that way it won't feel like work, but it will be interesting and fun. And actually, that is something I think we try to do with both the concentrations and giving our students a lot of possibilities with elective classes, just to make sure that, you know, you form your own studies. You decide which subjects you're taking and you get a chance to, you know, take subject that you're actually interested and passionate about. Um, of course, you know, you do need some basics. Uh, if you're studying, you know, political science, you will have to do, say, comparative politics. But um, apart from that, when it comes to the more specific classes, we want to make sure that, you know, they're filled up with people who are really interested. And to be fair, it's also mirrored in the size of the classes. So we have quite small classes to begin with. They're just 25 students maximum. Um, but if you're going up through your, say, you know, concentration classes, getting more specialized, then you're probably looking at a much smaller number of, you know, 10, 15 people who are really, really passionate about the same thing as you are. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that gives the best education possible. Yeah, that that also makes me think that you not only get to know, you know, your classmates really well, but the faculty and I mean, the faculty, some of them have been doing some really amazing research outside of class and things like that. I mean, there are opportunities that come up from that kind of small environment. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you know, you your teacher, all of your teachers will definitely know you by name. There is a flip side to that. Also, if you fall asleep in class, you will be picked up on. <laughs> and it has happened, so I can confirm that. Uh, but also definitely, so quite a few of our uh, faculty are very active in research. In fact, um, for master's students and also for the last year, so graduating BA students, um, there has been a research project where students participated and, and they were invited to join the faculty in research on um, police, police interaction towards uh, protesters in different parts of the world. Um, mm -hmm. Here we really capitalized on the fact that we have super diverse student body. Yeah. Um, you know, it's great, but it's nowhere better than when you're studying something like, you know, political science, because you can then really have a look at, you know, what happens, um, say, you know, how does populism look in South America? How does it look in Ukraine? And then probably you have people from those countries right in your class and you can talk about, you know, what are the similarities? What are the differences? And so the same thing happened with the research. We had students from, um, you know, eastern parts of Europe analyzing the police, uh, police. Um, we had students from eastern part of Europe analyzing the differences between uh, interactions between police and protesters uh, in Belarus or in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, and we had different students maybe from uh, South America analyzing same events happening there and in the US and in France and in Hong Kong. Um, so it really allows us to integrate students into the research. But of course, we also have faculty who are, you know, professionals. Yeah. Um, so we do have some some uh, professors who have, for example, been, you know, U.S. diplomats for a long period of time and then they transitioned into academia. So um, there's quite a large variety. Yeah, it's exciting to learn from and exciting people to learn with too. So yeah, well, uh, thank you so much for talking a little bit about this. I mean, there's gonna be a lot more information about the new programs on our website. So if you need more, I know you can reach out um, to our admissions team. They're always happy to help students through the application process. But thank you, Susanna, for talking with me today about it. Thank you very much, Lily.